What's going on? Everybody joining us online. We're about to get started right here in a couple minutes. Uh, just working out some little details here. Uh, but stay tuned. Uh, we're going to get started. It's going to be a great class. And, um, really exposing the works of unrighteousness tonight. Come on in. Just have a seat wherever you want. You can okay. set the table if you want it. Uh, we're going to get started right here in a second. We sit just, at what table? If you want to sit at the table, you can, or you guys can sit at the table. Oh, I like sitting close to so, the screen. Um, I can't read. Yeah, okay. yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. that where you sit? No, you sit right there. Is, just, is your just wife watch here, out. too? No, not tonight. She don't come tonight? Not tonight, no. So oh. just be careful around the table, though, because I got oh. the phone kind of rigged up. Yeah, so oh. kind of scoot your chair over there. Okay. Yeah. Well, what happened... Is, uh, here, I'm going to turn the light off, and then we'll get started here. Well, let me ask you, what was your name again? Lori Alt. Lori Alt, okay. I have been in multiple car accidents since uh, age four, uh, 15, and uh, I've had, every time my brain recovers, I have another accident, people rearing me. I did have a one guy, his name is Kevin, he said, you know, Lori, people are trying to kill you. Well, definitely sounds like some demons are. Yeah. Okay, I can promise you that. Uh, that's highly uncommon for people to get in that many accidents within their life. I think I've been in two car accidents my whole life. Oh. So my question... I guess uh, I've been in too many. <laughs> uh, sometimes people just drive fast. But, you know, for mm. you, you said you've been in four since you was in your teens, and you said that, you know, every time your head starts healing... I have another accident. Like yeah. a girl that was coming home on 75, she hit me. I don't remember. I don't have everything written down. Right. Um, she hit me going 65 miles an hour. She knocked my skull off my axis at a negative four. Wow. Let me ask you this. And um, Do you know much about your background? Have you, did you grow up in a Christian home? Yes. You did grow up in a Christian home? Yeah, mom and dad, they went to church, you know, Sundays, Wednesdays. Uh, we went to... Uh, Catholic? No, 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 no. no. Uh, Lutheran, Pentecostal, okay. and non-denominational. Did you ever get involved in anything like horoscope reading or, or anything like that? Spiritualism or anything Ouija like boards. that? You, no anything? Ouija boards. Horror movies or... I don't like horror movies. I like thing. fun things. I right. like I like survivor stories. Okay. I like Walt Disney. Okay. Let me I'm ask you this. I'm heart. So, well, Walt Disney's. You like Walt Disney. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's, a, that's a huge key. Uh, because we can pick up transfers through watching TV shows and things like that. Walt okay. Disney is highly known for pedophilia and witchcraft. Just so you do know. Oh, if you, you, and if you think about it, ass? Walt Disney is full of magic. Oh, I see what magical you're saying. Kingdom. Yeah, That's the Magical right. Kingdom. And a lot of the shows or cartoons or these uh, TV shows on TV, now Lucifer or this or that, they'll put up warnings in the beginning. Okay. Spell caution, spell binding this or this or that, or this show talks about spells. And what they're doing, even though it seems innocent, uh, they're in there, they're casting real spells. And they're using cartoons and things like that to do it. And what happens ultimately is people can pick up transfers. For example, uh, you remember the movie Poltergeist, right? Yeah. Yeah, the horror, the scary movie, it's right? It's very scary. Yeah. But I, do yeah. I, okay, so my long-term memory is kind of erased. Right. I'm working on my short-term memory. <laughs> um, and I'm getting a little better. I've been trying coconut oil in my coffees. I've been trying to go to speech class. I've been trying to go, do constant therapy on the computer. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to do, they say a match game is good for people yeah. like me. So what I'm saying is, and I do read the Bible, 
and I do, but I need to journal. I need, I, I need to do more. I was starting the forgiveness challenge, and what's yeah. interesting. I gave her your paper. And oh, what's, and I need that paper again. I got one. And she it's interesting. Mine. I got a better one for you. Tomorrow. Good. And it's interesting because I know, know you maybe don't like this person. Or it doesn't matter. She was doing the Alana. Alana. She's African American and she's been helping people get through the uh, uh, isolation. You know what I'm saying? Just doing spiritual things and she helps people, you know, breathe in, meditate, whatever. I don't watch her, but it's just so weird. A couple weeks ago, she had the forgiveness channel. channel challenge and then she said write out the person's name what they need to be forgiven for yeah. uh, what uh, how it made you feel I'm, I'm trying to remember but I didn't it's like I need to take the time to do it you know what I'm you saying do it. the and, habit and, the, and this is going to be a great great lesson for you tonight okay this is because it's all about the mind and the okay. brain okay. and how the enemy attacks the mind uh, you know some people just pick up spirits uh, engaging in sinful behavior, fornication, okay. uh, picking up transfers, uh, reading uh, spiritualism books, in yoga, Can new I share age. Can what happened last week I, I, when I prayed for you? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. She was um, getting confused, and I asked her, you know, yeah. do you want me to pray for you? And I laid hands on her, and I could feel the anointing, but then I told her, um, I'm getting chills. There was something that she needed to repent of, and it was the promiscuity. And such a godly sorrow came out. I mean, she was weak. Great. It was, it was definitely the Lord. Was you ever married? No. I, I, and I know it doesn't matter. You did it once. It was not, you know, I, I did it well, yeah, twice, yeah. Jesus twice Jesus. in my 52 years. She repented 51 years. It, but I and then she has said for the past week and a half, that she feels like her brain's being rewired. Yeah. For the well, there are the spirits week. in your brain. You've got. Uh, it sounds like definitely a familiar spirit in your brain. Uh, some wit, maybe some witchcraft or this and that. I don't know. There's some things that I'd have to like kind of investigate. Okay. But let's watch this. And I've been and hit by. I usually when I get hit, it's drunk drivers. Hmm. That's uh. Yeah, the def devil is definitely trying to kill you. So, but. <laughs> Jesus said in Isaiah 53 my that he had borne our sicknesses, our diseases, exactly. our infirmities. And he became a curse so that we could be set free from the curse. And ultimately, by his stripes, we're healed. Mm -hmm. Now, you've got some trauma-related issues in there. But uh, we're going to see tonight that Jesus can heal anything. Mm -hmm. He can heal anything. It doesn't matter. If I he, really he wish you could death. see what's going on inside my head because it feels like it's opening and my youth is tickling all yeah. over. Well, those are, those are witchcraft spirits manifesting. Are they really? Right now. Yeah, that's just manifesting. They're not right. leaving? Well, they're there. But we're gonna get, just, just let's watch this. You're going to get a chance. That's all right. Hey, well, I love your eagerness. That's it. I'm so glad. I want to feel better. That's, and you're going to tonight. So what we're talking about, and for everybody online, thanks for joining us. Uh, just oh. so you guys know. So... The phone, the, I got the phone rigged up, so you guys listening online there. So, uh, I had a stand, and my stand broke. So, oh. and then I had plugged the computer up, and the computer wasn't working right. So, that's how I knew this was going to be, be a good class. And generally, <laughs> and generally, good classes, you know, when you start talking about exposing the unfruitful works of darkness, mind control, yeah. uh, it scares people. People want that feel good, I love you message, but when they're having to come in and take a hard look at themselves, um, sometimes, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? It scares people away. But we're not here to, to be friends with anybody. We're here to speak the truth and Amen. love and watch the Holy Spirit set you free. Amen. And we're going to expose the, this right here, the enemy. It's his number one tactic, mind control. Okay. So, you know, you guys welcome to the Most Hope Deliverance Center. Uh, this is a book we wrote. It's on Amazon. So if anybody ever wants to order it or know okay. anything, you can go on Amazon and order it. Uh, this is on the Kindle, and then that's a paperback. Okay. So for everybody online, if you guys want to check it out, it's an autobiography. Basically tells about a life uh, that I grew up living, uh, abuse, crime, drugs, violence, uh, penitentiary. And this was in my 20s. So, uh, and that's why I tell people, hey, I was just a, a bar of gold going through the fire being refined. Mm -hmm. and, you know, so, and I'm still in the refining process. Mm -hmm. But it's truly true. 
that God wants those who are on the bottom of the barrel because that's what he's looking for. He wants you. He wants you. He loves you unconditionally. So, and he loved me when I was in the pit of my sin just as much as he loves me today. Nothing more. And he loves you. He's, he's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. Uh, he's excited. As a matter of fact, it makes us, I like to think he's got a heart, you know, jump for joy that you're sitting here right now. So, we get his classes once a month. Now, next month I'll be in Phoenix. Uh, so it'll be either right at the end of the month or, or it will be off next month. Because I'll be in Phoenix for about three weeks. So, and then we're talking about taking a trip to San Diego. So uh, I do teach upstairs on the first and third Sundays from 11 to 12. Uh, basically, I preach. Um, and, you know, I always tell people, if you can't wait till the class, come into the service. See me afterwards. We'll get some prayer right then and there. Man, we'll, get, we'll get it right then and there. I like the Holy Ghost is always ready. He's never waiting. We're never waiting on him. He's waiting on you. I do counseling services by appointment. Mm -hmm. We've got a food pantry. I do get a lot of clothing for infant and toddlers. And then if somebody you know needs a miracle list for everybody online, or if you guys know somebody or somebody that's a reputation that don't want to come in and wants to walk through the self-deliverance process, you can email us, teamjesusmost20 at gmail.com. I will send it to you. Um, it was set up by my brother Mike, and it's healed thousands, thousands, thousands. I, as a matter of fact, I had uh, watched a lady work it uh, who was... Uh, diagnosed with polio at the age of three and uh, you know for the first time she could pull herself up in balance but now she's up out of the wheelchair and oh. God is she's in recovery God is healing her body uh, her balance is getting better uh, but she's got to continue to work the list you know she had to forgive some people it's a really great testimony that's uh, nothing that we've done but she's met the requirements that's outlined in the Bible and Jesus is faithful he's always yeah. faithful if anybody ever wants to donate for everybody online, this is how you do it. Uh, we don't care. Everything we do is free. We don't care if you donate. We don't care. It, that doesn't matter. You know, we all, and then when I preach upstairs, you'll never hear me pass a plate. I, I just don't. But it was freely given to us. Freely we don't give it away. Mm -hmm. Period. We don't care. Jesus provides our every need. So tonight we're talking about mind control, a couple of tactics of it, fear, lies, and lust. Lust is a strong desire towards anything. Mr. Eddie, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It could be food uh, and how the enemy infects our brain with spirits to control our mind. The Bible says in, uh, I think, Ephesians uh, that he shoots arrows at us. What, 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 do you guys remember the scripture? You know, fiery, darts. fiery darts, that's it. Fiery darts. So I found this little fiery dart. <laughs> <laughs> threw it on there. You know, and so. Uh, I like it, but that's what he does. He shoots these darts of lies, fear, lust, and rejection. Generally, the rejection demon comes in at childhood. Maybe dad rejected you, mom rejected you, was hard on you. I see you shaking your head, so there's yeah. probably some things there. Yeah. Uh, and then once this demon comes in, it always works with fear and lies and cowardness. Cowardness is to be still. You know, you don't have the courage to get up and do anything. It isn't that you're a coward. But it prevents you from taking action. It prevents you from seeking help. And it uh, immobilizes you and isolates you. Uh, and it all starts with a lie, though. Yep. It all starts with a lie. That's why the Bible says we've got to take every thought captive. Because the lies are fabricated facts. So what the enemy will do is he'll send his dart with this lie. Mm -hmm. And then it will be based off the facts of everything around you. And then the fear spirit will strike in your body, secondly, and it will reinforce the lie. So now the lie becomes a fact, and your body's reinforcing it. Are you following me here? Yes. And then what happens is you believe that lie, and that lie now becomes the truth, but it's not the truth. Oh, I, I'll, never, I'll never be healed. Look at me, I've been in four car accidents, I've got brain trauma. Well, that's, that's a, that may be a fact, but that's not the truth. The truth is, by your by his stripes, right. you're healed. That's, right. That's it. The truth is, you should know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth is, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. So, and you always got to go back to the truth. And the truth is, the only truth in this world is found in the Bible. So, and then, lust is a strong desire, so a lot of the times we'll look for escaping. 
But we're going to get into some things here and we're going to see how the brain works. Because if we don't understand how the brain kind of works and processes things and what we get affected at, we really won't understand exactly the tactics that we need. So I put this video up here just to kind of prescribe what the demons are. It was given to me. I hope you can hear it. It was kind of recorded off my phone. But let's just pay attention to it. Okay, so I like that. I want to tell you why. Because it's a Terminator clip, and he says, hey man, it can't be reasoned with, it can't be bargained with, and it absolutely won't stop until you're dead. And that's what these demons do. They pump these lies into your head to gain control of your every action. Because if they get control of your mind and influence your body, they've now got control of you. So the real war of the world starts within our mind. That's where the real battle's mm -hmm. taking place. Joyce Meyer wrote a book, The Battlefield of the Mind. Oh, best book ever. Yeah, phenomenal. I wrote it. Best it. book ever. Great book. I read it twice. The third time, I somebody asked me to read it, and I said, man, I'm going to go through some things if I read this, because I knew it's exposing the unfruitful works of darkness. I yep. kind of pushed it aside until I got the courage up to read it. It was a great book, though. Yes. Uh, three times. Think about what you're thinking about. Yeah, you got to. But what happens is, is the enemy... You see, we grow up, and because of trauma and abuse, the enemy develops a fake soul within us. Mm. We get soul wounds, and then he kind of develops a fake you. In other words, you handle certain things a certain way. <gasps> I just suck it up. I just, I just, I just, you know, you just, however you do it, you know, or you, you go to cry and you just, nope, it's okay. You know, that's that other you coming out from them soul wounds. But what it is, is, is he uses this fake you and he'll pump it every now and then with the truth. And he does it at an early age. So you're driving down the road, and, and I, I heard this analogy, and I'm stuck with it. Oh, look at that puppy. That puppy's cute. And you're a little kid. You're a little girl. Oh, look at that puppy. You hear him barking in the background, and you're still just playing with your toys, dolls. You go by him again. Look at that puppy. These are the thoughts. The books. One time you drive by it and oh that puppy is barking, it's cute. You look up at it. Oh, that is a cute puppy. He's got you. Mm. He's got you. Mm. He's got you right then and there because now, being young, you've received that thought and you've accepted that thought of yours. But what you don't realize is that you picked up a rejection spirit from the womb, or because dad beat mom or rejected you, you, you got infected mm. with fear spirits. Mm. So things came down. Because the Bible says that God visits the iniquities of our fathers on the third and fourth generation. Or you don't realize that great-grandpa was a, a 33 or 50 degree, whatever, mason. You don't realize these things. Our grandma was a witch, spiritualism. You don't realize these things. Mm -hmm. But you receive that thought, now they got you. And then you grow up your whole life, and these thoughts are coming in. You put your shoes on. Oh, the kids at school are going to make fun of them shoes. Now you're asking mom for some new shoes. You understand? Now you're becoming fearful of what others think. Now you're developing lust, a strong desire to fit in with the world and everyone around us. Because the enemy has now got spirits in your brain and he's pumping thoughts into your head. And you're receiving them. Second Corinthians tells us this. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to those that are lost. And whom the God of this world, this age, listen to what he says here hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of this glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The God of this what age? Mm -hmm. What is the God of this age today? Music. Music. Uh, See, television. Television. Man, think about it. I heard a guy break it down. Tell a vision. And it molds you like Disney. And then, and then you go somewhere like the Great Wolf Lodge, and you're looking around, and kids are walking around with wands, playing casting spells. Mm -hmm. And it seems so meaningless and harmless. But the enemy's playing chess. We're playing checkers. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. The parents took them there. 
They're accountable for it. They're opening that door for their children to be infected. Mm -hmm. It's just that serious. Yeah. People say, well, I don't know. It's just it's, there's got to be some grace. There is grace. By grace you're saved through faith. But if you want to be uninfected, mm -hmm. you're going to have to put some work in. You're going to have to meet some conditions. You're going to have to forgive some people. You're going to have to repent and turn from your ways. You're going to have to start taking every thought captive. Because the God of this world, music, rap, rock, uh, sex, let's talk, homosexuality, mm -hmm. the God of love, the God you can do anything you want, this isn't spiritualism, new age, that's the God of this world right now. Mm -hmm. You know, hate, let's be honest. Yeah. Hate stems from rejection. Yeah. Oh, I, I feel rejected. I don't like Asians. Asians don't like me. You know, oh, them Arabs, they're going to blow something up. I can tell. I'm rejecting them. Man, that's not nothing. We were all created in the image and likeness of God himself. God loves them just as much as he loves you. It doesn't matter if you're Asian, white, black, blowing people up. God wants them just mm -hmm. like he wants you. But that doesn't mean if they die, they're not going to go to hell. But he's going to give them a chance to hear the truth and repent. And then it's up to them what they do with it. But the God of this world, he blinds the minds. The minds. Remember, the mind is the driver's seat for the vehicle. So if I want to blind your mind, for example, look around this way. If we wanted to keep the sunlight all the way out, what would we do? But we'd have to cover them all the way up, right? So if I want to blind your mind, I'm going to, if I'm the enemy, I'm going to infect it with spirits to the point to where you can't even receive the truth. Mm. You're going to continually have a negative thought disorder. You're going to go through things all the time. And I'm going to hope that no one ever comes along to get truth into you. Because I'm going to beat you down with rejection that leads you into rebellion. But God is merciful and just, and he always sends someone along our way to send and share the truth. So, but it's, it's what he does. He blinds their mind. He does it with lies. He does it with lust. He does it with fear. He does it with rejection. And what is it? Lest the light of the glorious gospel, the glorious good news of Jesus Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Here we go here. This again shows us how the enemy affects the mind. He affects our brain. Remember, it always starts with a thought. Mm -hmm. You have free will. It starts with a thought. Acts 14, 2. The unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned. So that a poison. Poison kills you. Right? Or it's going to harm you. They're what? They're minds. And in the Greek, through the interlingual Bible hub, that means thoughts. Evilly. Wickedness. They perverted them. Again, affected against their brother. Now, if you go on and read this, it said that the brethren were sharing some gospel. They were going around this town there, and they were getting ready to share it. The unbelieving Jews got mad, so they got a little mob together, and they went around, and they stirred some people up. But what happened was even some of the apostles or the disciples started to hear it, and it caused discord amongst the brethren. These are believers. These are believers in Christ Jesus that their thoughts, their minds were poisoned, they were affected negatively, and it caused a discord. How many churches have you been to? I don't like so-and-so. They just said something. I just, I just don't like that person. But yet that person could be someone God uses to change your life. So, we have to understand, though, that they're talking about they poison our thoughts. Mm -hmm. Can't get into the mind unless they go through the brain and do the thoughts. And it was against the brethren. This so discord. Second Corinthians tells us this: the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Go on, read. Go on, quote it. <laughs> the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down the strongholds, casting down every imagination and high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. There it is, right there. Amen. It's a great job. That's hiding your word in your heart. Now, we got to apply that, though, every day. Every. If it's negative, it it's not from God. That's right. So, oh, man, I'm looking back. That's not from God. Oh, man, I'm, 
being bold. That's not from God. But the enemy will use facts to infect you. Because as soon as you receive it, click, 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 they, they're just going to keep pouring. And like you said, the weapons of a warfare are carnal. This is a real life spiritual warfare all day long. Mm. And we got to bring every thought. Everything. Not some, but every. Mm. You might be saying, well, Brother Josh, that seems pretty difficult. There's a lot of thoughts that go through my mind daily. Well, as you grow time and you're renewed in the spirit of your mind and you're transformed through the renewing, you're morphed into something else, you're changed, and you develop the mind of Christ and the character of Christ, it gets easier. When that negative thought comes in, instead of engaging in it one time, you'll... Uh, yep. and you just, just kind of walk away and you sit down and you say, man, I didn't... I usually give them an ear for whatever that will. Praise the Lord. Something must be changing. But you got to get in the Word. you got to study the Word. And then you got to be a doer of the Word. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us numerous times to guard our hearts and mind. So heart, and it's a generic term for your inner man. It's not talking about the red pumpkin thing. That's, that's, look, that thing runs automatically. You know? What he's talking about, you got to guard your inner man. And you got to guard your mind, meaning you got to guard your thoughts. Oh, we do this by taking every thought captive. And I always we, ask myself, does this go against the character of Jesus? That's a good does one. this line up with the love of God? Is it pure, lovely, true, honest, mm. and good report? I mean, I just, because it's so easy to give in when you're upset or angry or somebody, somebody comes against you or does something wrong. And sometimes boundaries are good. But I've never drawn them before, so I've been doing it lately. That's good. And it's been hard for me. And yeah. sometimes I, I just have to leave. I just have to say, okay, I can't take this anymore. I've got to walk away. Yeah. I'll yeah. see you guys later. Yes. Yeah. And walk. that's and that's and that's great. Sometimes I walk away. You know, there's somebody unloading on you for about 30, 40 yeah. minutes or two or three days. Yeah. Hey, look, man, I, I got to go to the store. Yeah. I got to get away from. I feel like you got to take a spiritual bath for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get out there and spend some time with God and pray. And that's it. And, you know, it's, it's an ongoing uh, transformation process. Uh, we know as we grow and we go through deliverance, uh, we will take a few steps forward and we'll take a step back. A few steps forward, a step back. A few steps forward, a step back. And that's because that's just a normal, normal process for anybody in deliverance. Uh, but you got, like you said, you've got to guard it. Uh, but, however, the enemy will only send you what's in you. Yeah. So if you've got fear, doubt, and unbelief in you, he's going to send you a bunch of lies, a bunch of rejection. You know, he's going to uh, you know, provoke you to share something sometime and you're not going to do it. You know, so, and then he's going to heap the guilt and shame and condemnation on you because you still got some fear, lies, and doubt inside you. And that's okay. And a lot of people, especially, you know, believers in America, have witchcraft spirits. They've got spirits in their brain. Uh, they may stutter. Uh, they may uh, just, you know, they speak with tongues, but they've got demonic tongues mixed into it. Mm. They've got a rejection demon hiding in the front part of the brain. That's where your decisions are made. Mm. Uh, and different parts of your brain can be infected in different ways. Mm. Remember, the brain is the processing center. So many times a person will enter into a world of fantasy. Think about that. Walt Disney. Makes you feel good, getting away, just escaping, eating that burger, listening to that music. It's fantasy. We escape in a world of fantasy. You get on the, the phone and you play a game. And I say, uh, yeah. But it, we're, cookies. We're, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's my favorite one. Hey, but that's what we do. But God is the God of all comfort. Yeah. But we're looking to the God of this world, world. who has blinded yeah. the minds of those that are lost so they can't receive the glorious gospel, he's trying to do the same thing to us. So, we do this with imaginations. We lust after something or somebody that they consider to be normal. So, you consider this to be normal. But is it normal? Mm -hmm. What's normal is, the, is what the Word of God says. Thinking on things that are pure, true, lovely, virtuous. Mm -hmm. Not saying, oh, I need an escape. That doesn't mean sometimes we don't need to get away. No. That's not what I'm saying. But we've got to take every thought captive. Because it's here. It's a counterfeit thought. 
Satan will use it in order to control your mind. Mm. Once you do it once, it's easier to do it again. Yeah. And then before you know it, you're pushing the Bible away, and you're getting sidetracked with, with cookies and games, and then you're asking yourself why you couldn't get your work done. Mm. Why you didn't make it to church on time. Mm. Why you're tired. Mm. Yeah, let's just be real. It can be through the power of suggestion, entertainment, movies, music, media, the news. <laughs> My is lifetime movies. Yeah. I yeah. have got. I started turning them off and yeah. turning because they just make you feel good. You know, everything like always life, turns yeah. out wonderful. At the end. I like Lifetime. I do. You know, especially you know, I, I like Lifetime movies. But you start really watching, you think this isn't reality. Life doesn't reality. work out like that. Yeah, especially when you're a Christian, yeah. because you're engaged in a war. Yeah. Now, if you want to be a spiritual loser all your life, then fine, go ahead, man. The church is full of them. See them every Sunday when you go to church. I got a church upstairs packed full of them. Mm. And I don't want to get out and do nothing. Mm. Seriously. Come to church, sick, leave sick. You know what I mean? Why? Well, you ain't exercising your authority. Well... And then the lying spirit that's in their brain says, hey, well, this went out with the apostles. Well, that's a lie. The Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But it starts with that simple lie. Mm -hmm. They heard that when they were a kid. Yeah. And they went to a pastor, seen their parents do it, and asked for help. And the pastor, who was spiritually ignorant to the spirit world, mm -hmm. didn't know how to answer. Right. Mm -hmm. So he just said, well, just pray. Yeah. Hey, look, sweetie, praying isn't going to get the demons out. Right. It may help, but you got to take authority, yeah. just like you got to take your thoughts captive. This is the biggest tool of the enemy, right here. Lies. We're going to talk about this. Here are some of them. The dark is scary. There's nothing scary about the dark. Let's be honest. But we think it is, because it's a lie. Bugs are scary. What's wrong with bugs? Really? But over a period of time, you, oh, I can't, bugs in the house, oh. Yeah. And then, or, that's true, man. Say, hey. I just, I just tell them, I told you, you belong outside. And if you come in my house, yeah. you die. So, <laughs> you get. How do you yeah. like that? I hey. gave you the rules, I gave you the boundaries. You crossed them, you crossed you it, that's it. But that's what they tell us, that germs are bad. And then you see people with OCD, they won't touch the door. Mm. Because once they receive these things, mm. they keep pumping keep in, it. and over a yeah. period of time, it went from, oh, that's a bee, oh, that's a bug, to, oh, oh, somebody help, oh my God, bugs. And seriously, let's be real. I'm mouse, sorry. A mouse. Yeah, it's a mouse. I, mean, I had a yellow jacket yeah. attack me, and I was like, get away. <laughs> yeah. hey, I tell somebody the other day, I said, dude, how much bigger are you than that thing, dude? That's exactly right. That's, that's a good point. Now, hey, I'm not saying go play with spiders and snakes. Right. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> what I am saying is, is those things are just as scared of you okay, yeah. as you are of it. And that's their defense mechanism. Generally, they run. Here's this one. You'll always be alone. Mm -hmm. never. You're never alone. Jesus never leaves you or forsake you. So, but you see the fact? You'll always be alone. You've been mm -hmm. single for 20 years. Well, that's, that, that may be a fact, but the truth is, Jesus has never left me or forsook me. Right. Yeah. I'm never alone. Yeah. Go kill yourself. Mm -mm. You hear yeah. that one? You're ugly. Nah. That gets pumped into your brain growing up. Everybody does. But we are created in the image and likeness of God himself. I'm not ugly. Yeah, that's right. God created me just how I'm, I'm, I'm made. God, man, God looks at me and he's like, man, hey. He's clean. That's a, that's a good looking dude down there. I did good. I did good with that one. <laughs> Here's this one. It's just who you are. You don't have demons. Mm. That's what people hear in church all the time. Oh, that's just your character. You're just different. No, man, you're infected. Mm. And people don't want to hear the truth. Or here's this one. I did a car accident four times. Oh, God did this to you. No, you didn't. The enemy did it too. Me. You got some trauma, some real life trauma. But God can heal you. Yeah. How could they do that? God already healed you. That's right. He already did. Yeah. Now you got to exercise your authority. Yeah. How could they do this to you? You better do something. There's a rejection demons. You'll never be free. All right, here's the Nike slogan. <laughs> Just do it. Just do it. 
They hate you. If they loved you, they'd do it. You're worthless. The Bible tells us Satan's the father of lies and has no truth. And listen to this, though, Proverbs. Listen to what that says. If Satan is the father of lies, every time you re receive a lie, listen to what it's saying. Telling lies about others is as harmful as hitting them with an axe, wounding them with the sword, or shooting them with the sharp arrow. Mm. The enemy shoots arrows at us, flaming darts, arrows, whatever. Yeah, they're lies. But if, if he is the father of lies and a lie does this when we tell him, what do you think it's doing to our brain mm. when we're receiving them? Yeah. Mm. What do you think? It's it's infecting. <laughs> There it is. You said it. Oh, class of no. You got this. <laughs> quench him with the truth. That's it. Quench him with the truth. For the word of God. That's it. But a lot of the times we look at the fact, well, things really aren't good right now. I don't have a job. I can't pay my bills. Oh, man, People things aren't good. People pleasing is the worst. Mm -hmm. People pleasing. Shh. What do they think about you? Shh. You know what I mean? Oh, hey. And, and here's one. Oh, my gosh. You know, uh, what, what do they? What do they? What do they say about you? What do they mm -hmm. think about you? Or, you know, or somebody comes and this or that, and oh, what are they thinking? What are they saying? You know, or, or maybe oh, they're talking about you. Or you didn't do that right. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. You could, yeah. Especially if you share the gospel with yeah. somebody or the truth. When you walk away, as soon as you walk away, that thought comes into your head. Oh, you should have said this to me. Yeah. You should have prayed for this. You're like. Hey, where are you at? Let me come back. <laughs> you know that? But that's what he does that day when we was at church. We prayed for your need. As soon as you walked, when you was telling me about it right then and there, I, it was on my heart to pray for you. But I became fearful, just honestly, about a thought that came into my mind, what will everybody think out here? Right. It did. And then all service... I prayed, I said, God, if you give me another chance, I promise, if, if I see her walking out this door, if you give me one more chance, I won't let you down, I promise. I did. But it allowed me to see that, hey, man, you worry about what others think? It allowed me to see some things within myself. So as soon as I caught her going up the aisle, hey, you know, praise the Lord, it was all him. Gray matter, cerebral cortex, so we're going to talk about this, this is the brain. Now, our, our next class is, we're talking about demons in the brain. Okay. It's a pretty in-depth study of the brain, how it works, the processing centers, and this and that. But just real quick, so I want you guys to understand this. This is a cerebral cortex, okay? The cerebral cortex is considered, you got your cere or cerebral, or cerebrum, and then your cerebral cortex, and what it is is considered to be the gray matter outside the brain, okay? And then underneath that's your cerebrum. You got your cerebral cortex that kind of goes around the whole brain. That's yeah. the gray mushy stuff that you see if you crack your skull open. You've probably seen quite a bit of it. So, uh, and then you've got your the stuff inside that's actually the bottom of the cerebral cortex. That's your cerebrum. Those are all parts of the processing center, okay? okay? And then you've got your frontal lobe here. This is where your motor function is, your speech decision-making. Uh, this is your temporal lobe right here. Uh, this is where people with speech problems, spirits get into the brain there. People pray with tongues and they get a da, 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 or they're real oh, sharp, yeah. or you'll hear a manifest in churches. Kind of like Indian chants. You know that one lady that they, used they, to do that, she disappeared. I didn't know that. Yeah, I, did, I think I heard it one day at church and I remember telling my wife, I said, hey man, they said, this lady's spirits are manifested. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, because you see somebody like that, and you go up and you say, hey, listen, I see them. I, I heard you over there praying, and oh, yeah, the, the Holy Spirit, you know, I was, I was feeling the Spirit, yeah, huh? Hey, listen, that wasn't the Spirit. It's exactly what Those, the whole, you're, you're, The Holy Spirit, is a, you're definitely anointed there. The Spirit's all over you because he's in you, but your demons are manifested. Mm -hmm. So was it wrong? Yeah, that I took authority over it in the name of Jesus no. and told that thing to shut up. It was in interrupting our service. No. And she stopped, and I've never heard her or seen her since. Now, see, that's great because what you can't do is you can't cast it out of somebody. You don't have the authority to do that. Mm -hmm. right. But if it's disrupting up. your life, and that's why, hey, shut up, get out of here, Satan. 
Yeah, I bind that power in the name of Jesus. You false tongues, whatever you are, on the side of the brain, shut up. Be quiet. I ain't listening to you. I tend to use them, try to use a nicer word than shut up. But <laughs> I just, you know, that's just me. But, uh, but you know, you did, you know, you did the right thing because what happens is, is you'll see people manifest in church services with the fake Holy Spirit. That Kundalini we were talking about, it's running rampant. Uh, they'll be up there doing involuntary motions and jerkings, uh, doing weird stuff, and nobody knows what it is. They, they, they don't know much about the spirit world. Uh, and you see these poor people not in control of their body. So like her, Dupreyan, in, uh, that is that chain or whatever, you took authority over and it stopped. Why? Because you knew what it was. It had to. You I knew what it was. I it. It was interrupting me. <laughs> yeah. But you knew what it was. Yeah. yeah. And Lord Jesus set her free, sent someone to get the truth to her. And it's just a spirit in the brain. She's a good person. She has spirits yeah. in the brain. It's so, deceived. And, you know, uh, sometimes it isn't even that people are deceived. It's that they've never heard the truth. Right. They hear uh, salvation, come to church, read your Bible, pray when you're sick. And, right. and then you just go through life. Right. What about the rest of the Bible? Well, because the brain, demons hide in the brain here. So, and then you've got your occipital lobe right here. Uh, this is your visual area. Yeah. So people with lazy eyes, blind, things like that, and they've got spirits hiding in the back of the brain. It affects that being your, your dorsal canal, going up to your vision. Um, you've got your paranetal lobe here. So, so, go ahead. I had to see an eye doctor. Um, long story short, I've got two blood clots in my eyes that bursted. Um, he said I went to a special retina specialist, and he took pictures of it because he's a specialist. But he said it. Could, he said they could have been old veins, and they just popped. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know enough about it. But what I do know is you, from what I've heard is you've got some real life trauma stuff yeah. from the accident, yeah. some legit trauma. Yeah. But Jesus is greater than all that, Amen. and he can heal you, and he wants to heal you. We have to, though, look back, and I tell people that when there's a repeated pattern over your life in a certain area, that generally it means that there's a curse on you. And it's all right, sweet. Uh, I mean, if you, if you need to let your tears flow, you let them flow. Let me get you a tissue real quick, all right? One second. So, and that's all right. That's the godly sorrow right there. Give me one second. Don't let it flow. Just relax. I have, I mean, I'm, I've been rejected so much by my family. Like, I don't know it, and I don't understand it, and it's, and it's my sister and my mom and dad who I try to believe that love me, but they listen to my sister that I don't understand things, and I did rebuke them one time. I said, yes, I, this is what I understand. Well, I do understand this. But the thing is, is I, and I've got driving issues, and I can't, I'm not supposed to drive because of my head trauma, and they're just keeping me safe, but it's very, they don't want to listen to me. Well, and see now, now what's happening here is, you said some things to your parents. Yep. You got to let your parents go. You got to forgive them, and you got to repent for that because that's the quickest way to put a curse on. You. Okay. So that's not adding to the problem. Okay. Also, your rejection demon is manifested. And I'm just going to tell you what it is. People are like, "Wow, brother, guys, you're horrible stuff." Listen, sweetie, I'd rather tell you the truth than to sugarcoat it because it makes. I heard you say, "They won't listen to me. Wait. They don't understand me." You feel rejected. I do. There it is. But the, that's the facts. But here's the truth. God has never rejected you. He says, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus died on the cross for you. He's been waiting for this moment your entire life. He's never rejected you. He says, He's long-suffering, not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. Jesus loves you with an everlasting love, and he separates our sins as far as the east is from the west. He loves you. He understands you. Why? Because he created you. He knows what's going on with you. 
He yes. also knows that there's some things up here that he's just been waiting for you to cry out to him, repent for some things, and he's going to swoop right on him. Like a, a, a mother or father picking up that child after a ball game or something. Good job. Good job, honey. Good job. Because he loves you. And that's what he's waiting for. I was rejected when I taught for 23 years in the school district. Never appreciated me, but I still woke up every day. I went there for the kids. <laughs> they, now, they always try to find bad stuff on me. Well, now see, I'm going to explain this to you. And this is great stuff. This is great because you got a kid out of you. You got soul wounds in there. Your soul has got scars yeah. from the emotional abuse. Yeah. And right now, as you're crying over that, Lord Jesus, take this from me. I release it, Lord Jesus. Go ahead, just let it out of there. I release it. I release it, Lord Jesus. I release this. I give you these wounds. I forgive these kids. I forgive my parents. I forgive them right now in the name of Jesus. I release this soul wound from me right now. And you just, just let it come out. And you just... If you got to go back, close your eyes, just relax, and think about the time when he was hurt. And it's okay because only the Holy Spirit can remove that scar, that wound. You forgive them. Lord Jesus, I forgive them. I release the negative emotions. Go on and say, I release the negative release emotions. The negative emotions. There you go. I release them right now in the name of Jesus. There it is, right there. I forgive them, Lord. There you go. Let it out of you, sweetie. It's all right. I pray you bless them. I pray you bless them. Be with them. Be with them. Watch over them. And forgive me. I forgive. Lord Jesus, I repent. I repent. Lord Jesus, I forgive my parents. I forgive my parents. Bless them, Lord. Bless them. I release the offense. I release the offense. And I'm sorry. And I'm sorry. And I break that curse off my life. And I break on. that curse off my life. Right now in Jesus' right name. Right now in Jesus' name. For dishonoring my parents. For dishonoring my parents. I break it off a hundred generations. Off 100 generations. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now go on, just let it out. Go on, just let it out. There you go. Let that soul wound out. Come on out. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on. Don't let it out. That's all right. It's all right. Get it out of you. Parents are going to come out. What's your parents' names? Jim and Joanne. Jim and Joanne. We're going to get Jim and Joanne out of you tonight, okay? Come on. We're, we're gonna get him out of you, and we're gonna watch it. We're gonna watch God do some miraculous things. But what you're seeing here is how these demons, this rejection demon, has infiltrated her brain. It's infiltrated the brain, and it's put all these negative thoughts. And then the rejection demon has placed you in positions your whole life that was a completely demonic setup, so that you would be rejected even more. And then you would reject yourself. That's what he does. Because they play chess, we play checkers. That's what he does. Honestly, how long was it before you started rejecting yourself? Maybe there is something wrong with me. Man, these kids don't appreciate me. Yeah. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm top shelf. Yeah. What's wrong with these people? Nobody understands me. And then you start thinking love is performance-based. Because that's what the rejection deep. If they loved me, appreciated me, they'd understand me, listen to me, and they'd do this for me. They'd let me dump on them all the guilt, shame, and pity. No. The Bible says we're to cast our cares to the Lord. That means to throw in the Greek. That means you're to throw all your problems to the Lord. And when they take a dump in your face, you just throw them to the Lord and you let Him worry about it. Because vengeance is his, thus saith the Lord. And to get my disability, my sister, I had to claim I was this had depression and anxiety. I don't understand the word depression because I'm a happy soul. Well, and see, here's another mistake people make. Well, to get my disability, I claimed and came into an agreement that I was depressed. You spoke a I'm just going to say what it is. You put a curse on your own life. Yep. I heard my son the other day say, man, I'm stupid. I said, whoa, dude. Yeah. I said, whoa, dude. I said, you don't, uh-uh, don't, don't ever say that again. You made a mistake. You're not stupid. You're very smart. Yeah. But the enemy pumped that thought into his brain, yeah. the decision, and then it manifested right here. Why? Because these two lobes work together. We're going to see that on the next slide. Our pre creative lobe 
hands are sensory area, our touch, the things we feel, stuff like that, senses. Uh, the Kundalini, Faith, Holy Spirit, will man play in, in your sacrum area. And then he also affects your brain pretty serious because he's a familiar spirit. And what that is, is uh, you'll see people basing their salvation on emotions or feelings. Okay. Oh, the Holy Spirit's here because I, I, I feel these chills. I feel this joy. I feel this way. And then Monday, the real world comes, mm -hmm. and they don't feel that mountaintop high. And, oh, God must have left me. I got to run back to the church where Jesus is at. What? Study to show yourself approved because Jesus, you are the temple of God. Well, look what it says here. So we got the gray area. And you say gray, and MRI say I have a lot of gray area which has been damaged. Yeah, you're going to love the next class. Okay. <laughs> you're gonna, hey, listen to me. You're going to love it, man. I got, I got, praise the Lord. I've had lots of help with this. I've been working on it for two months. Uh, studying the whole brain, awesome. and, and I've Just got brain scans galore <laughs> of damaged brains, healthy brains, okay. and I'm going to give you just a quick tip. Did you know that through MR scans, CT scans, or whatever, they have found that when people speak in glossa or speak with tongues, uh -huh. that, that isn't that they don't change, it's that... Uh, they're not being activated through, uh, through themselves, through your own activation. In other words, when you pray in tongues, mm -hmm. there's actual scientific evidence that it's something else praying in your body. Something else. That's pretty neat. And the shed wow. lights up different parts of the brain, so that means you're not doing it. So it truly is the gift of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say, well, and we've seen it at church today. Some people got baptized in the Spirit, some people couldn't. Some people that can't, it could be fear, doubt, or they yeah. could have something blocking it. If they're going home and they're living with their boyfriend mm -hmm. and fornicating every night, that can block the gift of tongues. It can. So here we see, though, cerebral cortex. This is a processing cerebral of the brain. Okay. It's good for, uh, it's, it works with your motor and sensory area. This is all stuff it works with here. So this thing wraps around and it affects all of this stuff. So if I was going to infect something, I'd go for your processing center. And then once I got into that, I'd send my hit lynchmen into different parts of your brain. And then once you start receiving them and making silly choices uh, and walking around repeating phrases from Walt Disney or from Lucifer, the TV series, or singing a rap song or rock and roll music or gangster rap, uh, you're speaking curses on your life. As As Sometimes, I, I, I forget where it was, they said, uh, you know, where, why was music created? And they said, well, because some Christians can, you know, if the Christians walk in obedience, they can't be cursed mm -hmm. because there's no place for a cursed land. Mm -hmm. But the witches and the warlocks know this, so they create and they run the entertainment industry, and then they put secular music out there, and you got the pastor listening to Gucci or Leonard Skinner. And, and singing the song going down the road. And he's putting curses on himself and don't even realize it. So this also though, affects your visual, your auditory, uh, your gas, I can't pronounce that word, your motor area. You see this affected a lot with people with strokes. If you're in your 20s or 30s and you had a stroke and you was healthy mm -hmm. and then one day you just had a stroke or something was on your brain, hey, listen, whoa, something's going on, man. You might have picked up a witchcraft spirit somewhere and cursed your life. You see that a lot with people that uh, went to palm reading. Oh, something bad is going to happen in your life, to, you know, but you're going to live a long life. That person mm -hmm. receives that, that diagnosis, I receive that, I am depressed, I write it down. Well, 20 years later, they have a stroke, they make it through it, they have a heart attack, they get in a bad car accident. I guess this is just how my life is. And then they move on through it. And it's just is a repeated process. Over and I don't over. want it anymore. There I, it is. I pray angels to protect me every time I get in the car. Well, and you see, pray for God to protect you. Because the Bible says, yeah, the Bible says that we'll be judges of the angels. And we've been made a little lower than God. We are his creation. So what, we, what you need to understand is that we look to Jesus. We don't pray to the angels. We don't do that okay. because 
you can be praying, oh, I got this spirit guy, Michael, the archangel. Whoa, you're praying to that dude, there's a chance where you got familiar spirit there. You know, but people worship these angels. And I'm not saying that there's not angels dispatched, and when people go through deliverance, I bind you up with the power, and I right now angels minister and pull them out in the name of Jesus, holy fire. Whatever floats your boat, okay? But don't be praying to angels. Out to God. That's it. He disperses angels. That's his choice. That's it. Because when David prayed, 21 days later, angel come down. I think it was Michael or Gabriel, one of the archangels that come down. Daniel, wasn't it? Or Daniel, yeah. I don't know why I said David. Daniel, thank you. But he come down and he said, uh, he said, I know, I was thinking that. He was David, dispensed but. immediately. Yeah. The... It took 21 days. Yeah. But, but Daniel never prayed for an angel or to an angel. He prayed to God. I ask God to send angels to protect me when I'm driving. And see, I, I ask. And see, your prayer should be, Lord Jesus, just protect me. Okay. Protect okay. me today because here's the issue. And it's a great prayer. Okay. But what happens is, is the enemy hears your prayers too. Lord Jesus, send some angels and encamp around me. Protect me as I drive today. Okay. Amen. And then you get in the car accident. See, God wasn't protecting you. There's that lie. God rejected me. There's that rejection. See? That, and that's what they, that's what he does. Remember, he's playing chess. He's playing checkers. I'm not talking about Satan. There's billions of demons out there. So we talked about this here in the lobes. These five lobes or whatever. A lot of the times people have weird visions, false dreams, uh, picnicking with Jesus, hanging out with the angels. They've got familiar spirits in their brain stem there. So that's just that's a given. Uh, but this is how, and I'm going to touch on this just real quick. Okay. So what happens is, is this thing here, can, all right, can controls you your emotions. Your, I can't pronounce it, but God, it was on. God, yeah, I'm a Dugawa or whatever. I think it was on that. People point. say I'm too sensitive. I say I'm, I'm who God made me to be. Well, see, now that's great because you say you say that, but this here. If you've got fear spirits or you're oversensitive in an area, okay. then this area can be infected. Oh. Okay, now I'm not saying some people aren't sensitive or some people yeah. aren't this or that. That's not what I'm saying. But if it's, oh my gosh, that's a spider. And every time somebody says <laughs> something, oh gosh, something's not right. Okay. Because what happens is, is this here, which is your area that controls your emotions, okay. it's in the center of your brain, it gets infected when dad yelled at you as a little kid. Mm. Beat your mom. You got scared. And the spirits came, jumped right into here. And then they work with this hippocampus area because this is what sends the signals out into your frontal lobe, your decision oh, okay. part of making that brain. Okay. And then that works into the thalamus, same thing. And this is your penal gland, which everybody tries to open their third eye. I'm sure you guys have heard that before, right? The third eye, people try to open their. No. They're like, good. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what you're online, talking about. <laughs> everybody online, if you try to do that, you got to get the demons out. Repent. So, but what happens is, is these things get super infected, and then they send false signals okay. throughout, false signals and lies throughout your body. Okay. So the lying spirit hides in here. It sends the fear signal, the lying, the oversensitive signal into your decision board to move into the brain, or over here to where... Uh, your periagal lobe is, which controls your emotions or whatever, and then it networks with the ones in your body. And then your body, because it attacks your soul from the soul wounds, that is childhood. In other words, it attacks the fake you, not the real you. The fake one that was developed and formed through hardships, trials, and tribulations, okay. pain, and abuse. Are you okay. following me? Yeah. yeah. So because if it attacked the real you, you'd say, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Dark ain't scary. They didn't say nothing to me. I don't have no reason to cry. This way, this is a lie. I'm, I'm not six foot five, you know. But that's what the, this is what they tell them. So, and this is how it works. So they get in here, they send these out throughout the whole center. center of the brain. But what irritates here. me is with people that judge me when I cry. You know, I was like, that's not sad, you know. But it's okay for them to cry when it's time for them to cry. Well, no. How does that make you feel? I'm like, why Why are you worrying about what 
You know what I'm saying? This makes me sad. This touches me the, the way. You know it what I'm saying? It makes you feel rejected. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good word. Yeah, you're rejected. Because <laughs> <You're> <laughs> they don't understand. Yeah. Exactly. Feel, how could they? They don't understand. I mean, you're allowed to feel your way. Why can't I feel my yeah. way? Yeah. Well, again, how was it received? Was it really sad? Right. Or is it just a false emotion? Was okay. it just a lie? Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what I say to you. If somebody down the road looks at you, and as I'm driving down the road, and, and somebody three cars over flips me the bird, and is like, hey, F you, you bald guy, kid, you <laughs> suck. Dude, I'm... Yeah. I'm going to keep driving. Yeah. But if, if my mom calls me up and says, hey, son, you're a real loser piece of trash. You're bald, you're fat, you're ugly, I can't stand you, click. I'm going to be like, oh, dude, what? That, that might, if I had some hooks in there, a rejection, that, that might really, really upset me. He's going to use the ones closest to us. Yeah. And he's going to, and he's going to yeah. use what's in you. Remember, rejection, everything you shared tonight has been trauma and then rejection. No and I've lost a hundred pounds. I was over 300 pounds. Well, that probably was a good thing. I don't know. It is, but I'm saying I lost 50 on the South Beach, and then I seen a functional doctor, and he said I have a gluten and dairy allergy. So I just took that into consideration, and I lost the rest. Yeah, I don't buy it into allergies or anything. Okay. I don't care. You know, look, okay. allergies, smallergies, I okay. say those are spirits. Okay. You know, okay. I, if generally if someone's overweight, uh, they've got uh, some emotional. sort of, of an emotional soul yeah. wound. Yeah. or their father was overweight, or something up in the family yep. tree, and it's a lust demon, which is oh. a strong desire towards something, meaning they're looking to escape, so they eat. Uh, to okay. They feel better, kind of okay. like an orgasm. Okay. You eat, you feel better. Okay. And But some people are just naturally big from birth, mm -hmm. but again, you got to look at that. So okay. Bible tells us here, He that covers the sin shall not prosper, but he who confesses them and forsakes them shall have mercy. That's the truth. This is what Satan is telling you. If you just confess them, it's enough. But then you'll find yourself repeating the same behavior. You, you follow me there? Yeah. The Bible says you've got to confess yeah. them and forsake them. You've got to repent and turn from your wicked ways. You've got to leave it alone. You've got to stop thinking negative. You've got to stop feeling rejected. Well, how do you okay. do that? You've got to get the spirits out of you. Yeah. Yeah. But the demons will say, hey, listen, just confess your sin for being angry and mad, and that's it. And then you find yourself doing the same thing over and over and over in a repeated pattern, a process. Okay. Why? Because, because the, the habit is hard to break. Well, it isn't that it's a habit. Oh. It's that you're being enticed and tormented and controlled by something other than yourself. Gotcha. A habit is something that you can break but is hard. But if you find yourself going back to it like an addict, over and over and over, and mm -hmm. you can't control it, you can't catch the thought, you can't stop the emotion, mm -hmm. you find yourself basing something off a decisional uh, uh, emotion, then you got to ask yourself, what's going on within you? But a lot of people don't. They don't catch that thought. Do you think it's sometimes what lie did I choose to believe and allow to get inside of me and control me? Yeah, absolutely. It's got to be, a, you know, There's it's got to be, a be root. rooted somewhere, and it it's is. usually rooted in what you chose to believe you chose to act on and well it could be an offense yeah and that's what i found with most people was that you know somebody says something nasty to them and they take an offense mm -hmm. I've done that. You know? and then as soon as they take that offense they, they lose that. they lose some of their deliverance mm -hmm. uh they get angry they get bitter and even though they may have forgot about it like mom and dad rejected yeah you forgot about it until it comes up to the surface but yet you're living your whole life under a curse. And it isn't until you get into the Word of God or even filled with bitterness, which is in the Greek, Asidio. So chances are people with bitterness, they have some problems with their health. Arthritis, self-hatred, So what's things a like stomach that. issue? Because I lost weight, but I, I haven't been able to get that off. Well, that's probably just excess skin. Oh, okay. So, that's okay. So, I thought maybe you could help with that. <laughs> no, 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 okay. I'm not a life of a guy. Okay. So, but this is worldly sorrow works on the death. Godly sorrow works on the repentance. So we talked about some lies there. We, we pretty much, you guys have any questions before we go into this next section? 
And then we're going to look at a couple charts, and then we'll get into some prayer. But fear is another thing the enemy works with. Fear and lie always go together. Bugs are scared. Ah! You know, you can't drive down the road, you're going to get in a wreck. Right. Oh, angels protect you. You know, so fear, lies, always go together. The Bible tells us God didn't give us a spirit of fear. fear. In Greek, this is Dela or, or Delilah, or how you pronounce it, means cowardness. What a power. This is dunamis power. This is supernatural power. Love and a sound mind. This is agapio love, which means it's unpolluted. It's pure. It's holy. It's undefined. Perfect love casts out fear. What is that perfect love? The love of Jesus Christ within you, the pureness of your body. Fear immobilizes us. We see that in the cowardness. Spirit of fear, cowardness down here, it immobilizes us. Mark 9, 32, we see the disciples got fearful. Mm -hmm. But they understood yeah. not that the saying, and they were afraid to ask him. Yeah. Something like that. When you're afraid, what are you, what, what are you afraid to yeah. ask? For the, hey, man, look, I don't understand. And that's what the thought comes in quickly. Hey, if you ask me, if you want to think you're stupid. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. That's it, man. It rears right up. I don't want to look stupid. I got to know what I'm talking about. Seriously. And then here in Matthew 25, 25, I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. Jesus had gave these people some talent, some money or whatever. Mm -hmm. Go out and, and flip, make some whatever, make some more money. And invest. two of them yeah, invested. Two of them did. The other one was scared and didn't do nothing with it. So the question that I ask you guys on that, what have you done with the talents God has given you? We all have spiritual gifts. Have I you mean, invested you. it? That's right. Have you invested it and watched God purge it so that you can produce more of it, more fruit of it, and grow in your anointing? Or did you hide it? Did you, are you ever learning and coming to the knowledge of the truth but doing nothing? Going to church on Sunday. Everybody who ever calls me as a prayer request, I always pray for them. You know what I'm saying? Name yeah. their name, and I just. And then I have a girlfriend, Becky, who always calls me to pray. She knows that I know the word, and she knows that she feels it. And I don't know. I'm. I mean, I know there's more people out and pray, but I'm getting closer with my neighbors lately too. Yeah, that's good. The great word for fear is phobia. Phobia. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, that pretty much sums it up. Yeah. I don't think I really need to go yeah. that. Top four effects of fear, though, blood pressure, immune systems, okay. depression, blood pressure, infertility. Yeah. You see this with men. If you got high blood pressure, chances are you got fear. Uh, or you got a weakened immune system, you're always being sick. You get a little sniffles in the morning. <laughs> oh, I'm sick. I need some alka <laughs> No. Oh, my gosh. I, I need my extra. And, I, 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 I'm going to use this example. I'll probably get in trouble later. I'm going to need some vitamin C. Oh, i got to keep my immune system. Man, you're taking 10,000 milligrams of that a day. You know, but this is what happens because people are fearful of well, getting I, sick. I didn't create infertility, but I had to take care of stuff. Yeah. Without, it, or I wouldn't have taken care of it. It would have had problems for me health -wise. And depression, you know, fear isolates because it works with a lying spirit, yep. and it causes the spirit of heaviness to jump in there. Ooh. This Whoa. is a little chart here. I got a couple of these in here, okay. so bear with me, all right? But this is how this works. I want to thank uh, my sister Kelly from Hardcore Christianity for this thing in Mother Aww. Nature. Uh, they sent this to me. I've seen it on her thing, and I said, hey, look, i got to have it. I said, i, I got to have this. I went to put it in a different uh, 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 class and ended up pulling it twice and put it in here. So fear leads to fantasy. So I get the word fear, but in my mind I can't process what fantasy is because I don't dream Fantasy of... is Walt Disney. I mean, but I mean, I don't... Well, you ever had a, a fantasize that you was a great teacher and all the kids accepted oh. you and you were teaching? <laughs> I knew they didn't. And but you were, but, but, your dream shows up. Oh, yeah. yeah Fan of my dreams. There you yeah. go. There you go. Fan. That's that it. One. That's that it. One. Great. Great. Yep. Great. Great. Yep. That's it, though. But Because that breeds right here. She just said it. Daydreaming. Daydreaming. Most people start daydreaming about wealth, power, position. Man of my dreams. Uh, 
So you see this with bookworms. People look, they daydream about a book. <laughs> Internet. Internet. Internet surfers, computer games, phones. That's an all source of fantasy. It's escape. Escapism. I can't deal with my life right now. I gotta read. I gotta watch a movie. I gotta watch a game. I gotta get on the computer. Okay, because they but study the word of God. Well, if you can have a religious demon, people oh, okay. can. Okay. So is it wrong sometimes when I have trouble falling asleep? Is it wrong to, to, to dream? Well, when I say I just I know I have to calm myself down from the things that happen during the day. Yeah. So sometimes I go and I picture myself preaching the word of God and watching the power of God, people getting healed and saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. Is that wrong or because I always fall asleep. No, yeah. So <laughs> I mean, look. I, I really don't know how to answer that, but this is, and it's, if I don't know, I'm going to say I don't know. And I'm going to tell you why I don't know how to answer that. Because every now and then, I'll be at church, and I'll see this, and I'll, I'll kind of think for a minute, wow, it would be so awesome to see the Holy Ghost just drop kick the demons out of these people, mm -hmm. and see this person over here get up and walk. And it almost makes me start crying. You know, mm -hmm. I can almost see this thing, but I'll have to catch it because I'm like, whoa, man, I'm, I'm I'm, I'm fantasizing this, and this isn't, you know, they have to oh, repent and turn from their wicked yeah, ways. Right. And, you know, that can be a dangerous place to go into. But uh, is there something wrong with, uh, um, I would say, visualizing or having great hope of seeing the power of God move in somebody's God, lives? Yeah. Uh, maybe that's a reword for it. I'm not sure, but I don't think there's nothing wrong with that, you know, it's like somebody coming to deliverance. I pray, Lord Jesus, and I pray that you sow this seed in their heart. And I pray yeah. you, you speak it real to them. I pray you set them free. Lord, I just want to see you move in their life. That's it. In Jesus' name, amen. That's it. You know, because there's, that's not, to me, that's not fantasy. I'm just praying for them. But, you know, you got to be careful because the enemy will pump thoughts into your head. And then I'll have you get up there and you'll try to do something or say something. And you'll just crumble. You know, because it was false. It was pride, right, false. elevated. So, and, so, you know, I, I don't know exactly how to answer that. I used to listen to sermons when I couldn't go to sleep and I'd fall asleep instantly. And after about a month of that, I said, wait a minute here. I got a spirit of slumber or antichrist okay. that wants me to not hear the word of God. Mm -hmm. So I had to go through that through a live self deliverance, mm -hmm. repent for that, because I was using the word of God to put me to sleep. I, and I was opening the door for that to come in of slumber. I've done that before. And so I said, man, hey, look, this ain't right. Yeah. Because the word of God is living and active. And it's supposed Sharp to build. Yeah, yeah, there it is. I get excited Amen. and I can't go to sleep. I have to do something different. That's right. That bores me. That's, hey, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm with you. Now let's look at this. So then we see here, fantasy breeds lust of the world. We've kind of talked about that, so I'm not going to go into that, but... Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the boyfriend, the pride of life, the new car, how people will see it. Uh, but it also comes in with perversion. Fantasy, and you'll see this with people with witchcraft spirits a lot. Uh, generally, whenever you find witchcraft or some sort of promiscuality or high levels of perversion, uh, and people will uh, imagine things of fornicating with others, uh, they'll be heavily involved in masturbation. Uh, even if they're married, they'll think about adultery with other women, so they'll watch pornography, mm. they'll surf the internet, uh, or uh, they'll have sexual dysfunctions, meaning they have early climax, no climax, premature ejaculations, they have no sexual desire, they don't like to be touched. Uh, these are all things from fear spirits, and this is how it works. Uh, also, uh, you see this in um, with child pornography a lot, uh, peeping toms, expositions, fetishism, sadomasochism, mm -hmm. oral and genital sex. Uh, if you ask me, oral sex is witchcraft because you're manipulating the natural use of the body and exchanging it for the use for gratification pleasure. The mouth is not made for that. Right. Uh, however, I stay away from that conversation and, uh, mm -hmm. because the Bible does not speak specifically on it uh, unless it makes the other person, the spouse, well, husband or wife, uncomfortable. Other than that, I, I stay away from it. 
um, because like I said, it is not written specifically in the Bible the way. Uh, and these can all come from fantasy. People will fantasize about all this stuff. Hmm. And then eventually uh, they engage in it. Uh, you'll see this with men that was molested. They pick up spirit spouse, fantasize about homosexuality. Uh, this is a real thing, man. And mm -hmm. people are afraid to share anything. Uh, men with rejection demons or fear demons. Rejection always works with fear and mind. Fear of men, fear of women. Uh, you see as it goes down, the mind is debased. and the scar, uh, it slows its level of function. They become sociopathic, psychopathic, or you're engaged in pedophilia. Mm -hmm. So, and that's because over a period of time, this fear spirit isolates you and you engage in something. And as the time progresses, your level of engagement progresses. So, uh, mostly everybody that's raped a third grader or a fourth grader um, has been on porn, I believe. Uh, my brother Rick has shared and Mike for about 10 years. Hmm. So, they've said that they've worked with thousands of pedophiles, thousands, the worst of the worst. And they said that every time they see, 98% of the time, the person before they engaged in it, they was 10 years on the front of it. And at um, 10 years, something changed in it. Uh, so we've seen fear. We've seen how it works on the diagram. But this is what happens when fear is your root. It brings fantasy into the lust of the world. And then if you want a copy of this, email me. I'm going to send you an email of it. Okay. So, but you see you engage in drugs, pornography. Um, bulimia, anorexia, uh, extreme exercise or bodybuilding. And this is all from fear. Peeping toms, uh, lust. You see it breeds for lust. Lust of the eyes, perversion, possessing this big house, big car. Uh, lust of the flesh over here. You got pleasures. You got the pride of life. You got power. Uh, you got money, position, uh, computers. Uh, you got, uh, you know, seducing. Uh, bookworm, so these are dangerous things. So each mm -hmm. one kind of breeds its own thing, as you guys see that. Mm -hmm. So you understand how that works? Mm -hmm. So fear is your root. Yeah. Comes up the fantasy, lust. So all these wow. things stem from a root of what? Fear. So lust. Now we're going to go on to the next one. We'll talk about that. So I like, I kind of like this. Uh, lust. Lust is defined as a strong desire towards something or someone. Lust isn't just sex. The Bible defines lust as something that is very different from love. Lust isn't love. Lust is a strong desire to feel good. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love hopes all things, believes all things, bears all things. Love endures all things. Love is sacrificial. It sacrifices itself. In other words, it, it, it keeps no records of wrongs. Yeah. Looks past one's faults. It provides for their needs. However, love can also come in the form of correctiveness. You know, but that doesn't mean you do it to provoke somebody to wrath. You just speak the truth to them in love because you want to see them free. But we have to understand there's a time and a place for all things. And some thoughts are just made just to stay in your mind. So remember, the enemy, we're talking about mind control, will pump these great scriptures into your brain and these great thoughts. And, oh, man, this has got to be from God. Because the devil, the demons, know the Bible inside and out. And they'll pump it into your brain, and then you'll vocalize it, and it'll be a complete setup. Because the person sitting across from you, they already know they're infected, and they're working with the spirits in them to reject you and to chew you up. And then you'll walk away and you'll say, man, I, I just don't think I'm going to tell anybody about Jesus anymore, man. I just don't feel this big. There's a complete setup. The enemy plays on your strength as a weakness. Remember, he's playing chess. So lust is selfish. You give in to it with little regard for the consequences a lot of the time. You buy that new car. That new car smell. You're out thinking about your bills. Lust is harmful. It's a distraction that pulls us away from God. Now we see the tree there. Look at all these things. It's all lust. That stuff easily pull you away from God. Power, position, money. Oh man, that'll easily pull you away from God. 
Lust spirits are Satan's blessings. Um, my daughter said this is Satan's biggest blessings. That's how Satan gets 98% of his wins. Yeah. Starts with a thought, leads to an emotion, which leads to a behavior. We talked about this tonight. And we're talking about mind control. If it's received, it becomes a compulsive thought. The parents don't understand me. Nobody hey. loves me. Uh, I'm sick. I've got arthritis again. Something wrong. I lost my healing. And it just comes on and on and on. You got a sharp pain in your back. You look up. Oh, what happened? Something. I do something. You receive that lie. You look at the facts because you had a false spe a false. Uh, feeling in your body because what you forgot is you still got layers and you haven't completed the deliverance yet and then they play on it and get you to open the door right back up. Uh, you see this again with overeaters, food, self-worth, gambling, cigarettes, sex porn. Second Peter 2.8 tells us friendship with the world is hostility with God. There's 50 more examples of lust in the Bible. I only put three of them up there. That's wow. That's pretty powerful. King David and Bathsheba. I know you guys are all familiar with that one. You've seen her on the roof. Now, I don't know what told her to go out and take a, a, a I do. bath on the roof. Demons? No. All the men were supposed to be at war. Mm -hmm. King oh. David didn't go to war. Mm -hmm. She felt, so she, it said she had come to the end of her cycle. Yes. So it was customary to bathe, you know, to purify yourself. Yeah. She thought there were no men around, so, so she would have been... And so when David saw her, because he wasn't where he was supposed to be, doing what he was supposed to be doing, and he looked upon her, then he crossed the line. Because, yeah, yeah. number one, was it Tamar? No, no. Yeah, and, Tamar yeah. was his wife. Dave, King David, was it Tamar? No, it was Tamar was, I believe. Saul's was, daughter yeah, was yeah. David's wife. Yeah. And when she made fun of him for dancing naked, you know, in the street. Yeah, before, he cursed him. He rejected her from that forever. Forever, yeah. She wasn't. She didn't have. It says that she just was isolated forever. Right. So, for him to bring Bathsheba into his bedroom, obviously his wife was nowhere around. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he was in the wrong place yeah. at the wrong time, yeah. doing the wrong thing, yeah. looking at the wrong thing, and did not reject the thought. Now, see, you said a few things too that you got to understand. Let's let's look at that and understand how demons work. So, she made fun of David. In the street or dancing. I believe he said he got naked and with things. Right, with all yeah. his might. Yeah, all his might to, to the Lord. Something in her, a negative thought, came in and she vocalized. Because those spirits there. Yeah. They've been around forever and she vocalized it. She just affected spirits in the brain or she just said thought that came to her mind. David took an offense. Yeah. He became affected. He shot her away. And David struggled with serious pride. He did. And he was a he was going to kill that dude's whole family and that whole village because they wouldn't give his mighty men food or something. Yeah, yeah. You know, when he was out in the fields watching over their people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when he was on the run. But, so, and then, so you see that, so he puts her away, but then David wasn't supposed to be where he's at. Like he said, something tells him to go out on the roof. He goes out, he sees her, he receives that thought. First of all, he woke up late. In the day, see, see. which means he was right. being kind of lazy and, yeah. and lounging around yeah. and not taking care of business when his right. men were out fighting. They were out fighting. So he wasn't doing what he was supposed to be doing. He wasn't getting up early and right. working. Because he said in the scriptures, he rose up early to worship and praise the Lord. But right. he wasn't waking up early anymore. Right. So, and see, again, what's preventing him from waking up early? Do you see? And then ultimately... This led to a curse of adultery yeah. and to his family. family. Mm -hmm. And it cursed, and, and then you see Tamar and Ammon engaging in incest. Uh, after that, David's whole family just destroyed itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, he raped her and was incest. I believe it was his sister or half sister. And then, you know, we even see Eve in the Garden of Gen uh, Genesis, lust of the flesh, eyes, pride of life. Uh, but my point is, is that lust comes in many different forms, and it's the enemy plays chess, we play checkers, and he's always got a bigger plan. He's got a bigger agenda in mind. Always. Always. So, the enemy knew that he would be mm -hmm. tempted, she was a weaker yeah. vessel, but the fall didn't happen until Adam took a bite. Right. The enemy's bigger objective, objective 
was the fall of man. Mm -hmm. and the enemy's bigger objective was playing chess here with King David and Bathsheba. Yeah. Started way prior to this to set up to this, to curse this. And ultimately, Jesus came out of the lineage of this, I believe. Yeah. So could this have been Satan's attempt to wipe this whole lineage out? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Let's not get into that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, hey, that's it. So every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin. Sin was finished, brings forth death. I don't think I need to explain that anymore. If you want something more than Jesus, you better check the motive. Yeah. We heard that today in the service, idolatry. Stubbornness is as a form of idolatry. When you engage in that, you're in rebellion, which is a sin of witchcraft. 1 Samuel 15, 23. Here's a big one for you. <laughs> this is the lust. So we see the lust of the world, we see the eye, which is seeing the flesh, which is self-centered in desire, and we see the pride of life. So this is again another diagram that kind of breaks it down. If somebody would like the diagram, mm -hmm. email me, I'll send it to you. When you see the lust of the eye, which is seeing personal appearance, possession, uh, sexual pornography, you want you know, a certain thing, a certain way, multiple sexual partners, excessive provision, bigger expensive clothes, house, horse, Diet, supplements, I mean it goes on and on. Lust of the flesh, sexual narcissism, pleasure, uh, hobbies, complete self-centered self-love, food, clothing. You see how all these things work together. Mm -hmm. The two top two really tie into everything. If you look at them, all through the top two work together, and then you got the pride of life. It's kind of down here on its own. And that's a very, very dangerous one because it consists of three simple things, power, money, and position. Mm -hmm. And if you look at all this over here, it comes with witchcraft control. Mm -hmm. Because pride is esteeming yourself higher than someone else. Mm -hmm. You try to control children, people, things, and events. You do this through money and your position. And ultimately, you're living in witchcraft. A lot of people don't realize that. See a lot of different things here. And then there's another tree, lust of the world. We see fantasy, anorexia, bulimia. So lust of the world, lust of the flesh, self-centered desire. You have the pride of life, power, position, food, drugs, all types of different stuff there. You hear? Flip on to the next one here. All that's in the world is lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, not in the Father, but in the world. Friendship in the world is with hostility with God. So this brings us about to the end of it. But what we see, first strike always lies to the brain. The second is the fear of spirit into the body, which triggers an emotion. And then the third strike is your body and your brain. The solution. Yeah. There is my favorite scripture. Cast down every imagination, the high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. However, the question is, is do you know what the knowledge of God is? You gotta study to show yourself the truth. Romans tells us not to be Romans tells us not to be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable, perfect will of God. Question. Yeah. I was reading that scripture the other day and thinking about it, and I've heard, I don't know how many people preach on it, that there's a good and acceptable and perfect will. I think what was revealed to me, I felt, that the good and acceptable and perfect will of God is the same thing. If it's the will of God, it's good and acceptable and it's perfect. Well, and that's the, that's the whole thing. When you're proving what is good, you're doing something that's acceptable. Mm -hmm. When you're saying, when you're, and then you're being accepted. So if you do something good, you know that that behavior is righteousness. That's not an ungodly. It's good. It's and that acceptable. is the perfect will of God. And that there it is. And acceptable. Yeah. That's because everybody always preaches, well, there's a good will. There, I mean, there's a good, there's an acceptable, there's a perfect, but they're all the same. In God, everything good and acceptable is perfect, and it is the will of God. Well, and this is what he says here, is that we got to be not molded to this world, but be transformed, and the Greek is metamorph uh, morpho, 
of the more so to change by renewing the redoing of your mind, your thoughts, the reprogramming of your brain and your thought patterns, that you may prove that you may be a doer of the word, that you have good, it's acceptable, and perfect for God. In other words, you're living out what's real in your heart, and you're being obedient to the word of God. Not in some things, but all things. Because that is, like you said, the perfect and acceptable will of God. Uh, is there three different wills of God? No. Mm -hmm. There's just one. God wants you to be a doer of the word. He says, if you love me, you'll obey me. What's the first and greatest commandment? Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Romans 12, 1 says we're to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. We're to do deny ungodliness, worldly lust, this soberly, means clear-minded, righteously, and godly in this present world. So we're going to take a break here, and when we come back, you guys want to use the restroom or get a drink of water. Yeah, that'd be great. So, uh, we'll take a break, and we'll get into Thank some you. prayer. And for everybody listening online, uh, I hope you enjoyed the class. We'll turn the cameras off when we get into prayer for everybody's uh, privacy. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Email us, teamjesusmosthope20 at gmail.com. Thanks for joining us tonight.